badass female assassin movies that will rock your world. The world of assassin movies has been unfairly male-dominated. Even though the genre has a strong presence in pop culture, most of these films have been testosterone-fueled attempts involving chiseled, muscular male actors in the lead. The woman can be equally capable as a brutal killer, and it has been established with some classics over time. Even though these movies remained a rarity, the trend changed after 2009. From 2009 to 2019, there have been numerous instances of women on screen saving the day following a crisis. The stories centering a female assassin out for revenge, putting behind their harsh and oppressed past, have been striking a chord with the audiences. As a result, many such movies featuring hit women have flourished in recent years. In this video, we will give you a sneak peek into the world of female assassins where we have clubbed some classics to go with some modern day hits. Buckle up and enjoy these female-led action movies that promise great entertainment. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. The Villainess, 2017. Suk Hee is a female assassin who was trained as a little girl to blossom into a ruthless killer. When her mentor dies, she has a chance to start a new life and come to South Korea, where an intelligence agency recruits her under the condition that she would be freed after a decade. But her past soon comes back to haunt her, and her promised future seems uncertain. Eventually, she has to take matters into her own hands, and the body count rises. An entertainment revenge martial arts flick is always going to appeal to the action lovers, and this movie does not disappoint. Despite the first attempt by the director Byung Gil Jung and the relatively weak script, the film races ahead of the contemporaries when it comes to the action scenes. The protagonist Su Ki, played by Ok Bin Kim, literally carries the narrative on her shoulders. There are some obvious comparisons with similar characters like Bride from Kill Bill, but Su Ki is a character on her own. Each action sequence betters the last, and the scene where she fights off several thugs on motorcycles while using a katana is simply jaw-dropping. Another fight scene that is sure to catch your eye is when she enters a martial arts studio with a mirrored wall and faces a dozen adversaries. Besides the acting performance, credit is also due for the cinematography and impeccable editing that makes the long shots seem continuous. You could say that some of the action scenes are a tad over the top, but it still makes for an amazing pop-munching escape from a hard day at work. <laughs> Lady Snowblood, 1973. Tales of Revenge make the best assassin movies, and the case of Lady Snowblood is no exception. The story revolves around the character of Yuki, whose entire family was murdered by a band of criminals. Her mother was brutalized and wrongly imprisoned, and even though she died during childbirth, she ensured that Yuki would be raised by a kung fu master to be a deadly assassin to avenge her family's death. Could she destroy those responsible for depriving her of her family? The story is based on a manga titled Lady Snowblood, and it was such a powerful plot that it inspired Quentin Tarantino to make Kill Bill. Sometimes we come across roles that had been written while keeping a particular actor in mind. As for the role of Yuki, Meiko Kaji was always the intended actress to portray it on screen. Clever Direction introduces some exceptional scenes that will leave you speechless, such as when Lady Snowblood is seen to be walking on snow in a dress that is filled with the blood of her victims. Meiko Kaji absolutely kills it in the action sequences where she uses the sword like a ninja and decapitates or splits her victims in half. This is a character that is literally born out of death, and the scene where her mother dies in childbirth and whispers in the ears of the infant to avenge her family is heavy with emotions. This is a must watch as one of the ultimate vengeance movies, and you wouldn't want to miss out on something that inspires the likes of Tarantino. Kiss Goodnight, 1996. Samantha is a loving mother to her eight-year-old daughter, but she has no memory of her past life. All she knows is that she emerged from a river eight years ago when she was two months pregnant. After receiving a sudden bump on her head, she starts to remember her past where she was a deadly top secret agent. 
Her old enemies are out to kill her, and she recruits the services of a detective named Mitch. Together they go on a killing spree, eliminating all criminals who come after her. This movie has the perfect blend of suspense, action, drama, and comedy that makes this such a wholesome entertainer. The director, Rennie Harlan, also the then husband of Jenna Davis, is no stranger to action flicks with a female protagonist as he already directed Cutthroat Island. Jenna Davis gave us a sensational performance, and as for the veteran actor Samuel L. Jackson, he is hilarious as ever, playing the role of her sidekick. Instead of the superficial and quirky Tarantino hitman or super cool roles, he plays a guy that we can identify with. Jenna is fascinating as Samantha, where she is a separate, fully developed personality who has lived through her share of trauma. As her submerged personality emerges, she becomes deadlier and the body count rises as the baddies fall prey to her might. There are some hardcore scenes, such as when Samantha and Mitch are ambushed in a crowded train station and the shootout leaves several innocent people dead. The final showdown is one of the best action scenes ever made, and while we won't spoil it for you, let's just say Jenna Davis kicks some serious ass. Anna, 2011. Anna is a 16 year old, but not like any other. Her childhood was shaped by her father who was an ex-CIA man and he trained her to be the perfect assassin. She is sent on a mission across Europe by her father, but she is being pursued by the intelligence agents of Marissa who is a ruthless operative with secrets of her own that she has to protect. Hannah successfully goes through her targets, but before reaching the final one, she is faced with some questions regarding her identity and humanity. Can she brave through all the trouble or is she destined to die young? This movie is not just about the mindless action and ruthless female assassin takes you through an emotionally engaging journey with some aesthetically pleasing cinematography to mesmerize you along the way. Storytelling by Joe Wright will ring some questions inside you as to why a father is training Hannah in that manner and why do they want to kill their targets. Those expecting an action-packed badass movie might be disappointed because Hannah is a lot deeper than you would anticipate. The acting performances by Saoirse Ronan as the teenage assassin is brilliant. She carries the role perfectly as you see her her being invincible at one time and vulnerable due to her lack of experience on the other. Her interaction with the family during her trouble is thought provoking as she picks up on the aspects that her father never taught her. The chase and fight scenes in a container port are exciting and many other unbelievable stunts have been pulled off without an over-reliance on CGI effects. The hand-to-hand -hand combat sequences are where Saoirse Ronan shows the training that went into her character where she trained for 4 hours a day for 2 months prior to the filming. The effects surely paid off and we have a remarkable movie in hand. Columbiana, 2011. An innocent nine-year-old girl, Catalea, witnesses the horrific murder of her parents by the henchman of drug kingpin Don Lewis. Her gangster uncle takes her in and with time she grows up to work as a hitman for her uncle. However, the stone cold assassin is determined to avenge her family and with each murder she hopes to be led to her ultimate target. But success won't come easy because besides the gangsters, an FBI agent is also after her. Luc Besson, the man behind classics like Leon the Professional, wrote the screenplay for this one, and his production company, Europa Corp, delivers yet another exciting action film. The script was intended to serve as a sequel to Leon, where Natalie Portman's character would grow up and track down those who killed Leon. Due to an issue with the rights, the script was modified to be Columbiana. With the expertise of such notable personalities as the brains behind the story, the movie never falters and lives up to the expectations of being a thorough entertainer with the alluring Zoe Saldana in the lead. She aces the lead role and impresses with some realistic fight sequences where she takes down the thugs in a creative yet plausible way. We bet that never before have you seen a movie where a toothbrush is used as a weapon. Zoe Saldana is tough and sexy as the protagonist and some scenes such as the fight scene in the jail cell will remind you of Catwoman in action. She moves like a ballerina and fights like a warrior in a non-stop sequence of fights that never seem to stop. We cannot imagine an action fan being deprived of this incredible movie. While filming for this movie, the director David Leitch had previously co-directed John Wick, but this is his first solo attempt. He for a fun movie night.
Naked Weapon 2002. It starts off with 40 13 year old girls being kidnapped and then they are trained to be sexy but lethal assassins. They constitute a mysterious organization called Naked Weapon and are known as China Dolls. Led by their leader, they execute their missions with perfection and are unstoppable till a CIA agent is hot on their trail. Can this assassin's clan be ended? This is a stylish and sexy action flick that has some gorgeous female assassins going to some exotic locations and taking down the baddies. The plot makes it evident that the makers weren't looking to deliver something intellectually enriching. You have over-the-top action sequences, including some mindless violence, but it's all fun to watch. The premise itself isn't realistic, where 40 girls are trained, and from them, only three survivors are picked, eventually after duels to death between them. You have a trio of killers played by Maggie Q. Anya and Jewel Lee, while Almond Wong plays the head of the organization. They are all prominent figures in the Hong Kong film industry and deliver some amazing action scenes involving martial arts. Their signature move is where they use their finger to sever the spine, and it makes for many breathtaking showdowns. Do not take it seriously, and you'll have a great time watching this. Didn't I tell you to trust me? I mean, isn't this a beautiful place? Miss 45, 1981. Even if the timidest person is pushed to the limit, she could potentially become a crazy killer. The protagonist of this movie, Thana, is one such timid and mute woman who gets raped twice in one night. She loses her sanity and picks up a 45 caliber pistol to go on a killing spree in the streets of New York. Thana has a clever strategy where she dresses up provocatively and roams the streets alone only to shoot the person who tries to take advantage of her. But what will she do when her secret life overflows into her work life? This is a cult classic that is probably among the best in the genre. Revenge flicks have been a popular domain for filmmakers, but this one takes exploitation films and revenge dramas to a new level. Zoe Lund is possibly in her most nuanced performance in a challenging role where she transforms from a quiet, timid person to a murderous lady. The story does have a similarity with that of Polanski's classic Repulsion, but it has some original elements as well. We would recommend you to go for the uncut edition of this film to truly appreciate the expressive acting by Zoe. She kills an incredible number of people, including the whole gang at the park, and an Arab and his chauffeur in a limo. It is hard to imagine a 17-year-old acing such a complex rule, while also stunning viewers in the action scenes. This movie is one of its kind, and the genre of female assassin movies would be incomplete without its empowering presence. Nikita 1990 Nikita is a street girl who is also a violent drug addict. When she kills a police officer and is about to be convicted, she is given a new identity and allowed an opportunity to start afresh as a trained secret agent. Nikita transforms into a cold-blooded assassin and becomes the ideal weapon to take care of the dirty work of the government. But when she falls in love and chooses love over death, things are about to take a crazy turn. Luc Besson, the director behind classics like Leon, seldom disappoints when it comes to an action-packed drama. Nikita is another successful endeavor by the French director, and despite the bizarre storyline, it stands as a refreshing idea with some believable characters. The film has a nihilistic sense of justice, and Anne Parallel plays the role of Nikita, the lady who delivers justice. She completely nailed the character, being the out-of-control drug addict at first and the dangerous killer later on. She had extensive training with guns so that she could be at ease during the scenes that had her go all guns blazing. The restaurant scene where Nikita shoots enemies mercilessly is hauntingly beautiful. This movie was nominated for the Golden Globe Awards for the best foreign language film and won accolades all over the world. The Assassin 2015 The story is premised in 8th century China where a general's daughter, Nie Yinyang, is kidnapped and trained in martial arts. She becomes a deadly assassin who eliminates the cruel and corrupt local officials. When she fails in one of her missions, she is sent back to the land of her birth to assassinate the man to whom she was betrothed. As she meets her family after 13 years, she must choose between her love and her mission. To be honest, this estoric film is not exactly meant for the western audience. However, if you could appreciate the background and the unique narrative, you are in for a terrific thriller at hand. 
It is slow paced, but tells the complete story, leaving no loose strings hanging. Shu Chi, who played the character of Nie, the assassin, is the heart of the movie, and her fight scenes are a sight to behold. It is reported that the director Ho pushed the cast hard when it came to the action scenes, and the actors were all bruised up to make the fights look effortless. Shu Chi is as effortless in acting out her conflicted character as she is in the scenes that demand her expertise in martial arts. If you are looking for a different cultural taste in the usual female assassin story, Assassin will be a great watch. Salt 2010 Evelyn Salt is an honest CIA agent who is framed for planning to assassinate the Russian president. Before being convicted, she manages to flee and sets off to prove her innocence. Her boss refuses to accept that she is a double agent, but her actions indicate otherwise. Can she prove that the accusations were false? It is not easy to fill the shoes of Tom Cruise, but Angelina Jolie does it with great success for this movie that was initially written keeping Tom Cruise in mind. She turned down the offer, and after some necessary changes to the script, Angelina Jolie was taken on board. She did a terrific job performing most of her stunts on her own and acting brilliantly. From the opening sequence where she is being tortured in a Korean prison, she is presented as a character who is tough and gritty. She shoots, punches, and kicks her way through the story almost like a female James Bond. The political subtext in the story only adds to the charm and makes for a compelling plot. The movie has its share of flaws and lack of realism, but nothing takes away credit from the entertainment that it offers. For a late night feature with a couple beers, we can think of no better action film. Kill Bill Volume 1 2003 After a long coma of four years, a female assassin awakens for revenge. She has been attacked by her ex-boss Bill, who sent her to the state despite her pregnant condition. Once she awakens, she sets out to hunt him down along with a team of assassins who betrayed her. This movie has two volumes, where the next part is about her continuing her search for Bill along with the deadly one-eyed killer L. This is where she finally comes face to face with her former boss and lover for a final showdown. If someone can give a simple revenge drama a larger story arc, that is the legendary Quentin Tarantino. He comes up with a movie that is sure to leave you dumbfounded, with an excellent storyline and an unparalleled acting performance by Uma Thurman. Her terrific acting skills even got her nominated for the Golden Globe Awards for the Best Actress category for this role. Her character, The Bride, required her to bring to the table her best expressions and her martial arts skills, and she excels in both. Even Lucy Liu and Daryl Hannah do justice to their roles. The showdown with the Japanese crime lord played by Lucy Liu will go down in history as one of the most brutal fight sequences in films. Even the second volume of Kill Bill has some extreme violence, such as the sword fight sequence between the bride and Elle that ends up in eyeballs being squished. Uma Thurman and her perfect blade make her an unstoppable fighting force who goes from one breathtaking fight to another. This is an unforgettable experience for all moviegoers and a chance to watch Tarantino at his best. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone.